Hello, plant people. How are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. I just finished watering some plants outside using a new product. And the new product that I'm going to show you today is probably going to surprise you. But we will also be talking about chelation, which is why this product works. So first, let's switch over into the plant room, go give Ella a visit, and then we'll jump right into the details. Okay, now that we're back in the plant room and we're here with Ella, let's jump into exactly what we're talking about. If you guys remember, I did a video a while back on humic acid, and in that video, I explained why I think it's going to be the next big thing for both gardeners and for houseplant people. Now, I also mentioned that I don't stand behind the product because I don't like the fact that it's made from coal. And I do not like the idea of sequestered carbon being taken out of the earth to be implemented back on top of the earth. It simply just not, does not make sense. However, I got a ton of comments arguing with me. And then on Instagram, I got even more comments telling me I was wrong. So like a scientist, I thought to myself, am I wrong? Do I have to look into this more? So I reached out to a professor at the University of Saskatchewan who studies soil science and he said I was wrong, but I also was right. So let's get into exactly what that means. So it turns out that humic acid, as it's called, may or may not be true humic acid, which goes back to what I said in the last video, which you can check out. However, he does believe that it has some organic material in it or organic components to it, which actually help promote chelation, which is very important in certain types of soils and is incredibly important if you're trying to grow plants to harvest fruits and vegetables from. So we'll be going into exactly why what chelation is and why humic acid provides that. But essentially what he said is the brand humic acid should be more so used as a label for the product and not for the actual compound because it's much, much more complex than just an acid. The second part that I was kind of right on, but kind of wrong on as well, was that it is made from coal. Now there's a huge majority of humic acid that is derived from coal, which is titrated with a heavily alkaline mixture, I go into that in lots more detail in my other video, but there are some products out there that he did say are derived in a more organic method. However, they all fall under the blanket of certified for your organic use, which is less than ideal because it really takes away from the companies who are honestly trying to produce products to help the soil and just soil health while also keeping the environment in mind. No word of a lie, moments after that conversation with the professor, a week later, a company reached out to me that is based in Canada. Surprise, surprise, she is one of our followers. She's one of the employees at this company and she's a follower of the YouTube channel. And if you guys didn't know, when you leave comments on my channel, I know who each and every one of you are, oddly enough, because I do answer all my comments. So when I was meeting with them in a Zoom call, trying to figure out more about their company and whether or not we would mash together well, she mentioned some of the comments that she'd left on some of my videos and I knew exactly who she was. So this company is based in Quebec. So it is a French Canadian company and it is family owned and operated. It is, they are so kind, so nice like a classic Canadian would be. And the product is called Ketonic. So this is the larger bottle. There's also a smaller bottle, which I actually have out in the greenhouse. And this is a humic acid that is derived from peat. So it's not derived from coal, it is derived from peat. And we're not gonna go into their process of it because it is proprietary. Obviously, they don't wanna give away the secrets for producing something as amazing as this. 
uh, which is obviously environmentally friendly and soil health friendly as well. But this is what the product looks like, and it is a liquid. Now, this isn't a fertilizer, you guys. You have to keep that in mind when we're looking at humic acid. It is actually a soil amendment. So it's used in the event that you want to help increase microbial activity in your soil, or if you have a sandy soil, a depleted soil. Um, it works really well in lawns, actually. So soils like that will benefit from this soil amendment soil less mediums also will benefit so house plants like i've always said in many many videos in the past potting soil should not be sterile if you have sterile potting soil you're going to have a number of more pests you're going to have nutrient deficiencies and this is your solution so while this isn't a fertilizer it is a soil builder and i can almost promise well i know for a fact that if you build up your soil health you will have better yields it just is science for the reason why that works and you can use this in both organic systems and inorganic systems that is the beauty of this product or any humic acid product for that matter is that because it's a soil amendment and it helps with chelation it's going to help with your soil health it's going to help with microbial activity all that fun stuff so the plan for this product what i'm going to be doing is i have two raised beds which you guys already know about in the backyard where I did one as a conventional system and the other I did as an organic system side by side tried them out what I'm going to be doing with the ketonic is I'm going to be doing one bed that's treated with humic acid and then I'm going to do another flower bed that is not treated with humic acid and we will see what the results are the recommendation for actually applying this is once a week you put 10 milliliters in a liter of water and what I would do to make this easier on yourself is I would actually mix it with your fertilizer you're not going to cause any burning you're not going to cause any issues like that so actually mixing this with a fertilizer whether again that be organic or inorganic it does not matter this will help with absorption so if you're going through a very hard rough time with a nutrient deficiency maybe you currently have some issues with chlorosis for example which is an iron deficiency caused by um well caused by overwatering typically but if you have that and you mixed this substance with your fertilizer it's going to help with nutrient uptake it's going to help release some of that iron from the soil um, scenario and make it bioavailable to the plant. The other way that you could use this is what my professor kind of told me was you could actually mix a small amount of this with an inorganic fertilizer. You can do this with organic, only inorganic fertilizer. And if you were to spray this foliar spray on the plant leaves, this would actually help with any nutrient stress or plant stress that your plant may be having. This will actually help as a vector for absorption. So that's actually kind of a really neat fun fact too. From what I've learned to date, I'm expecting quite good results, especially in those beds. I am not fond of the soil. It's not old soil. It's only about five or six years old that I've been using it, but soil takes time to build up and I'm having a really hard time keeping organic material and organic matter in that soil. So I think that this is going to be my solution or my fix to that. Now, I will be trying it on some of my indoor plants as well, container garden, that sort of thing. But overall, the main focus for this is going to be comparing the tomato bed raised bed with the ketonic and the one without. If you guys wanna grab this from the Canadian company, I will leave a link down below with a discount code. Feel free to grab some if you bought humic acid and it was derived from coal or you're not sure how it was derived, don't panic. You guys, a lot of you said you had purchased some and now you're scared to use it. There's no reason why you can't use it. It's, it's plant friendly, it's soil friendly. The issue wasn't the product. The issue was the environmental side of it and the, um, the chemical structure of it and how we're trying to put a label on something that's very, very complex. It's not, it's not a single unit. So a really good way of looking at any humic acid 
especially something um, in a liquid form like this is it is a compost or a manure on steroids <laughs> is a really good way of putting it so when you put this into your soil profile you're basically giving it a shot of manure and compost so really great things i can officially say this is one product uh the humic acid ketonic i do support i just i really urge you guys to look at where the humic acid you're getting comes from what you're looking for to ensure that you're getting an actual organic product not something that's derived from coal is on the back it's going to say black peat generally it's going to say something to the effect of black peat or organic peat heavy peat something like that will be on the label if it has a chemically name like lateralinite I totally butchered that but anyways that is coal so just do a quick Google search on what the humic acid is derived from because you have to put that on the labeling so if it is a chemically sound and it doesn't have peat in the name or organic matter in the name then it most likely is derived from coal so let's jump into exactly what chelation is and why it's important because I promised you I would do a video on this I think that this is a very fitting companion for that conversation based on my conversation that I had with the doc so let's jump into it so chelation is something that naturally happens in the soil and it's very common in soils that are high in organic material. So a Trinizemic soil, for example, would have that in native prairie, or whereas a um, forest soil would not have a lot of chelation because it lacks organic matter. Now, the key to this is that fertilizers, typically both organic and inorganic, have chelates in them in hopes of helping plants actually uptake nutrients faster. So chelation is a way in which organic matter helps as a vector in the uptake of nutrients into the plant. That is where ketonic would come in. As an organic substance or an organic soil amendment, because we're flushing the system with so much carbon that it helps to chelate the soil so it actually takes those nutrients and many of which are micronutrients and flocculates them from the soil particles and puts them into the soil suspension so that it's actually usable for that plant this is also very valuable in certain types of soils that have pHs that are out of line, if you're noticing a nutrient deficiency caused by a pH issue, then it may be time to consider using a humic acid, for example, to help to chelate that soil and release some of those micronutrients, some of those metals into the soil system so it can be uptaken by the plant, despite the fact that you have poor soil pH. Because soil pH is one of those things that's really difficult to change, especially on a large level. If it's a contained system, it's a little bit easier. But when we're talking the surface of the earth, you're kind of stuck with what you get based on the parent material you're dealing with. Another really neat feature of chelates in the soil is that they will actually take typically toxic toxic substance that are in excess and force them back into the soil profile and back into the soil um, walk i guess you could say so that it's not bioavailable for the plant and essentially will not cause toxicity in the soil so if you have a soil that is very high in iron for example then using something like a humic acid will actually help regulate the levels in which iron is released to the plant. So it will walk it into the soil system and kind of pull it away from the plant's availability. Now, it's not gonna do that for all iron. It's still gonna leave some bioavailable, bio but if there is an excess, and this is all done through cations and anions. So based on the charge of the iron and the charge of the soil, which essentially affects the pH of the soil, it will actually lock away certain components that are in excess based on an excessive amount of a positive charge because Fe, which is iron, is a positively charged soil nutrient. And then the other really important thing with the humic acid is which we actually talked about before 
was the cayenne exchange capacity. And because it is an organic material and it's not a fertilizer, it is a soil amendment, it helps increase the cayenne exchange capacity of that soil. And that's specifically why I think it's gonna do very well in my raised beds outside. That is a sandy loam soil. And because of that, it leaches nutrients like crazy and if that was in a natural soil system what would end up happening is i would end up with probably an alleviated layer but because it's in my backyard and it hasn't aged um, too too much yet i still have some chance to in hopes of reclaiming it and that's where humic acid would play in is by increasing that cation exchange capacity we're able to hold on to more moisture we're able to hold on to more nutrients and ultimately prevent things like drought or nutrient deficiencies last little weird thing about chelation is there's quite a few studies that have been done and because of the regulation in the metals it actually acts as a way to prevent pathogenic um agents from harboring in the soil and that's just kind of a neat fun fact so things like viruses for example are actually limited or reduced in soils that have high levels of chelation there you guys have it you got a two for one here we got a little bit more information from someone who is much much smarter than me on humic acid simultaneously an awesome Canadian company somehow some way decided to insert themselves at perfect time and then we also have a little bit more details on what chelation is and actually why we want it in our soil and how to go about increasing it so if we are having nutrient issues if we're having pH issues if we're having um, water or moisture retention issues or we have a very sandy soil, we have a peat soil that is devoid of microbial activity, then humic acid or just an organic additive in general that contains high carbon, so a compost or manure is ideal for you. Now, not everyone has ex access to good quality compost and Honestly, with the city compost, I personally was using it last year. I got a ton of weeds with it, meaning that they're not composting it properly. So this year I won't be using the city compost and good quality compost is really difficult to come by in my area for whatever reason. We don't let it digest long enough. We like to give us wood chippy-ish type compost. So this would be a great solution for that. Um, also for indoor plants, if you're using an organic fertilizer, you need microbes. So if you're doing vermicompost, manure, compost whatever the case is and you're mixing it into your soil system you need microbes there to actually break down that nutrients change it into a usable form so that it can be actually uptaken by those plants and humic acid is going to be your vector in which you can get that done so i will be adding it internally as well and you could technically add it um in a hydroponic system oddly enough um that will also help with soil bioavailability and your hydroponic systems too so that's kind of cool kind of fun i hope you guys enjoyed this video be sure to go check out ketonic's instagram which has t-shirts and hats that talk about soil health which is very very cool we got lots of tips and tricks on there and then also check out the link down below if you wanted to grab some humic acid and do a side-by-side -side trial with me because i am excited to see the results um i've had dms telling me that the results they've seen are magnificent i actually have trial data now that has been done um, that I got through the university through my uh, special little login thing I have where I can actually look at scientific journals that are showing some really great benefits. So I'm excited to try it out in a gardening setting. Most of the trial data is done on a very large scale that I've seen. So it's really hard to um, analyze what that's going to do in a micro ecosystem essentially is what's going on there. So, so if you are a farmer, and you're looking at humic acid in your conventional farming system or in your organic system, you can reach out to Ketonic. They have a different um, 
product that they use for mass production. You may be something that you want to experiment with or you might want to give it a try. But yeah, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Hit that comment. Hit that comment. Say, leave a comment down below. Hit that subscribe button and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.